friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Karina and today is Word Wednesday. What is Word Wednesday you may be asking? Well it is the day that we get to sit down together and take a look at a couple Bible verses and digest them and talk about them and I get to share my thoughts on them with you all and hopefully encourage and motivate you in your walk as a Christian. So today we are talking about something that is very prevalent in our society and very very important. So today's word is how to love like Jesus in today's world. Let's go ahead and get right on into it. So this topic is inspired by a conversation I was having a few weeks ago with some family members. We were talking about how we come to make certain lifestyle choices and what we do as friends in regards to those lifestyle choices. Okay, so in today's world, there are so many different lifestyles that people are choosing, and it's not something that is new, right? We can look in the Bible and see that people were living in sin and in things like you know, homosexuality and adultery and things like that. So these sins are not new things, right? The, these This sin that we're seeing that's so rampant, it's not new. It's just being brought to um, a level that it hasn't been necessarily before. And not only that, but it's being, it's almost being displayed as, you know, this is my choice if you don't, um, accept that this is my choice and you know tell me that this is okay that this is my choice then you hate me and you're against me that's an extreme view right but that is a view that a lot of people have and that is a view that it needs to be broken up right so let's get into this this is kind of heavy you guys so what does it mean to love like christ in today's world you guys now, I'm not saying that homosexuality or, you know, sexual sin is the only sin. It's not, right? And that is where this that is where this discussion ended up going with my family one day. Because as Bible believing Christians, we believe that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We are not saved from this life of sin unless we take upon ourselves Christ's blood, right? Unless we take on his atonement as our own, right? And we choose to accept that and then walk in that freedom, right? We have to, to choose to walk away from the sin, right? The sin's over here. We have to choose to walk away from that sin and to put on the blood of Christ and to choose that lifestyle as a Christian to be cloaked underneath Christ's righteousness. So that being said, what does it mean to love in this society the way that Christ did? Now, you guys, we can read any number of stories in the Bible, and Jesus, while he was here on earth, and he still is, of course, um, not here on earth, but, but he still is this way, um, he was a friend to all, right? He was, he, he saw the least of these, and he loved them. You know, he um, saw a, a person by the side of the road, and the people that would just walk by them, he stopped and chose to love on that person and to show them exactly what they needed. He he loved on those who were ill and those who were sick and those who were poor and those who were outcasts of society. He loved on a tax collector. You guys, he chose to call him out of a tree and go and have dinner with him and give him the highest honor because he loved him. Now, what does that mean for us as Christians, right? When we take on the sacrifice of Christ, we become Christians. We're many Christs, right? That is what we should be striving for. That is, um, that's our goal. That is our mission on earth is to be as much like Christ as we possibly can be. And because we're human, we are flawed. We will sin, you know, every day and constantly. And we have to just continue to pray for repentance, but to know that we have to choose a life away from the sin. So those sinful things that we were caught up in. So say whatever your sin was for me, it was, um, it, it was, uh, you know, immoral, um, like being sexually immoral, right? That was one sin that I was caught up in before I was a Christian. And when I chose a life of following God, I had to turn away from that. I, you know, you don't stay living in that sin and say, but God loves me, so I can just keep doing this. It's cool, right? Yes, God does love you, but he wants more for you. He wants you to turn away from that thing that is holding you captive and to walk in the freedom that he is offering you. So let's take this to the scriptures. I'm going to be reading out of, of course, the love passage of the Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And I'm just going to read a couple verses. I highly encourage you to read the entire chapter because it is wonderful and it's all about love. And it's a great example of how we should love others and the way that Christ loved. 
so I'm going to read actually the first verse and then the very last verse as well because they are super prevalent to the point that I am um, trying to make today. So verse 1 of chapter 13, if I speak in the tongues of men or of angels but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. And verse 13, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Now you guys, throughout that verse, we see exactly what love is, right? Love is patient, love is kind, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not envy, etc., etc. It goes on and on. And at the very end, these three remain Faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. And I love the f love. <laughs> I love the first verse of this passage because truly, if I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I'm only a resounding gong or clanging cymbal. So what does that mean? To speak in the tongues of men or of angels, you know, so that's if we speak like everyone around us speaks, right? Like if we know all the slang. Or if we are speaking in heavenly tongues, right? If we are speaking um, in Holy Spirit tongues, but we don't love, right? So we can have all of the knowledge, the head knowledge. We can have all of this spiritual knowledge. We can have all of this experience and all of, um, you know, we can know the, the Bible inside out, backwards, forwards. You know, we can quote every single verse to you, et cetera, et cetera. But if we don't see people the way that God sees them, and just love on people for being his creation, for being his child, then we are missing the entire point of the gospel. We are missing the entire point of why Christ came. And instead of loving on people, we are judging them. And we can, it, you can easily go to a place of judgment and of um, just spouting the word, right? And as, as a Christian, it's, it's, it's funny, you see this often with people who are like new believers who are like really on fire um, because they get to a point and they're like, no, I turned away from my sin and what you're doing is wrong and you need to run away from that, right? Well, it can come off a little bit as, as like a judgment. Well, it's like, well, hey, you were just doing this two weeks ago. Like, why are you on me now? You know, but instead we have to, to come to one another and say, I love you because you are God's child. And I know that he has better in store for you than the life of sin that you're choosing right now. And that's a choice. It is a choice that you're choosing to live in this world, but there is something so much greater and so much sweeter and better that the Lord has to offer you than this mediocre thing that fills you up for a moment, but leaves you dissatisfied as soon as you know the night is over or the high wears off or that person walks away from you or that relationship is unfulfilling or the car loses its flashiness for you or that purse gets a little worn out and it doesn't have the same symbol status as it did or if your boyfriend dumps you, etc., etc. the list goes on and on. Right? All of these things that we can wrap ourselves in uh, on a human level and on, on an earthly level that we can think of our prized possessions and jewels, right? Those things all eventually leave us and, and you know deplete us and don't fill us up the way that God does. God continuously fills us up and renews us. And and that is the life that we get to choose with God. So as I'm saying this, right, what does it mean to love on others and to love on just people in society as a Christian in this day? It means to show them love, unconditional love, and to love them and to know that, um, you know, if they are choosing a life of sin, to love the person that they are because they are God's creation, they are God's child, but to know that it is okay and that it is our responsibility to not love the sin in them. And this covers every type of sin. Like I said, the Bible tells us we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. None of us on our own are worthy of, of being with God in eternity. None of us, right? We've all sinned, every single person. And so none of us are free of that, right? Whether it was a big sin or a little sin, God doesn't see it as big or little. He sees all sin as the absolute sin. So whether your sin was a lie and someone else's sin was adultery, God sees it all as sin. And if we haven't chosen to accept God, God's love and to accept the the gift and the sacrifice of his son on us for our sins as repentance right then we we aren't saved we aren't protected it, it doesn't matter what our sin is right so we are all 
every single person who's been created, we are all on equal playing field as far as that is concerned. And the only thing that can differentiate us is whether we're covered in Christ's blood and have claimed that repentance and that gift of salvation through him. So this can be really tough. And I know it's probably something that is kind of like difficult to grasp in a way. Um, and I know that it's I can, I can totally see that from the outside looking in, you can think, oh my gosh, like, ugh, a Christian, like, they just think they have their life all together and they're so much better, but that's not true, and that's not what we're called to do and to share, right? We're called to say, I have sinned and I have been exactly where you are, and maybe the circumstances looked a little different, but I have been in that place, and I have tried to fulfill myself with things of this world, and nothing did, nothing worked. And this is what works. God's love is what works. That's what fills us. And so that's what we have to share to others, right? And the last passage in this chapter, these three remain faith, hope, and love, right? So if we lose our faith, if we lose hope, love is still the greatest thing, right? Because love covers a multitude of sin. Love covers all, right? And it was it was God's love for us as his people that sent Christ. So guys, if we do not love others, then there is, there is no point, right? There's no point to calling ourselves Christians if we don't share the love that God has poured out onto us with others, right? And that is our greatest opportunity and our greatest um, calling and choice is to love others and to show them unconditional love and to say, I have walked where you walk. I have been there. And I know that that is, it is, it is not fulfilling that it does. It leaves you empty, but God's love does not. It fills you up and it never runs out. So this is kind of a heavy topic, you guys. And it's something that can definitely be unpacked and just unlayered continuously. Um, so if you have questions, definitely let me know. But I just wanted to kind of scratch the surface and get on here and just share that with you guys because it's been, it's it's what's been on my heart lately. And like I said, just having that discussion with my family really brought it to the surface that our greatest job as Christians is to love others and to, to let them know that our love doesn't come with a um, requirement. You know, it's it's just free. We're, we're just going to love them. And we, we're going to try and, you know, we're going to love them through their situation. And we are fighting for them, fighting on, on their behalf, and want to see them step away from that life of sin. But if they never choose to do so, we still love them. And that is that is our job, is to love and to just be love like Christ. So you guys, I hope you're feeling the love today, because I am. So let's go ahead and just pray it out real quick, and we will get on with our Wednesday. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for your love, Lord, that your love never ends, that it knows no bounds, Father, that your love um, was perfectly manifested in your Son, Father, who came and died for all of our sins so that we didn't have to die a sinner's death, Lord. So we thank you, God, that he took the place for us and that we get to walk in freedom. Father, I pray boldness over each and every one of your kids. I pray just an absolute knowledge of how much you love them, Lord, that your love for them never runs out. It never runs dry. They can never outrun it. Lord, they can never use it up. Father, it can never expire, God, but that it just goes on and on. And I thank you, Lord, that that is the truth, Lord, that your word tells us that your love is perfect that we can see the perfect example of love in your word, Father, that it is patient, that it is long-suffering, Father, that if we choose not to, to love, that we are a, a, a clanging gong, Lord, that nothing in our life matters if we choose to not love your people. And so I just pray, Father, that we would find new ways today to love each and every person that comes into our path and into our lives today, Father, that you would point them out, Lord, and that you would encourage us and challenge us to love hard just the way that you do, Lord. We thank you, Father. We praise you in your precious name. Amen. So guys, that's it for today's Word Wednesday. I hope you've enjoyed it and that it's encouraged you and that you'll find someone today to love on in a way that Christ would. Thanks guys for watching. Have an amazing day and I will see you soon.